Earlier, we told you about our ninth president, William Henry Harrison, nicknamed Tippecanoe, one half of Tippecanoe and Tyler II. Now it's time to hear about the Tyler half. Thank you so much for having me here. It's our pleasure, Mo. This is Sherwood Forest, the plantation of John Tyler, Harrison's running mate, who became president after Harrison dropped dead. Now this was a campaign poster for William Henry Harrison and John Tyler. If Paney and Harrison Tyler seem especially at home here, there's a reason. You, sir, are President John Tyler's... Grandson. Not great-grandson. Grandson. Grandson. <laughs> yep. You heard right. President John Tyler was born the year after George Washington took the oath of office. So how can he have a living grandson? Well, my grandfather was born in 1790. My father was born in 1853. And I was born in 1928. Three generations spanning 222 years and counting. How old was President Tyler when your father was born? He was 63 years old at that time. And then my father was 75 when I was born. And now I'm 83, 84, whichever it is. And so that's how we get to where we are. <laughs> the Tylers are related to seemingly everyone in Virginia's historic Tidewater region. Thomas Jefferson, Presidents Benjamin and William Henry Harrison, and at least half a dozen Jamestown settlers. And of course, I'm descended from Pocahontas, which goes back before Jamestown. <laughs> of course, not everyone named Tyler is related. Do you think that you're related to Stephen Tyler? So you're not a fan of American <laughs> Idol or Aerosmith? That's the biggest looking jerk I ever laid on. Harrison, you don't want to say that. Cut that out and let's try again. Well, I will say the same thing. <laughs> John Tyler established the precedent that a VP succeeds a president on his death. Yet he's the only president not to be officially mourned in Washington. When Tyler died during the Civil War, he was a member of the Confederate Congress. I'm looking for the resemblance here. No. <laughs> they may not look alike, but there is that distinctive family trait. Forgive me if this sounds a little indelicate, but I mean, for a man to sire a child in his 60s and then, a, and then another man to sire a child in his 70s, and this is pre-Viagra. I mean, this is, I mean, that's extraordinary. Those are great genes. Dr. Tyler had a third son by this marriage when he was 81. If you had a child now. Those were second wives. I'm still the first. But I must say, the two of you look fantastic and I can't lie, it would be awesome if you had a kid. Another oh, one. thank you so much. That's very kind. Well, Penny, I'm ready. <clears throat> Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not ready. Really. <laughs> we'll get another candidate for that. I'm not ready. No, no, no. no thank not ready. you for the compliment. That's quite lovely <laughs> of you. 